My name is Marshall Grip Gilson, and I am the winner of the 2020 Table Read My Screenplay competition. ISA invited me to be on their development slate, and now I am a top 25 writer to watch in 2021. Offbeat was my first sitcom pilot, and I finished it in the middle of the year last year and started looking for places to send it. And so when I'm like in that mode, I do a lot of um, researching. So I'll just there's a, there's a lot of sites, a lot of websites that are directories of competitions. Um, the thing that made the table read competition stand out to me is, I mean, first of all, the table read. It's always exciting to see people like perform your words. Um, and then also cash prize doesn't hurt. Um, but really the, the thing that I filter on the most is the ones that look like they are searching for the work that I have. Um, I think that there's a, a lot of competitions looking for a lot of different things and it would be very easy to um, just paper the, the whole world um, with your script and hope for a bite. Um, I try not to do that because I think it's... Uh, a, it's a waste of resources, both of like my, my, my emotional resources and also my material resources. It costs money to enter things. Um, so yeah, the, the balance I look for is the ones that are uh, looking for the thing that I have and also uh, have a, like, have a, a prize that I want. You know, there are like a, also a lot of competitions that are like, submit your screenplay. And if you win, we'll post you on our website, which is like, okay, that's fine. And I think that particularly if what I'm mostly looking for is like feedback like understanding of how it's coming off to people that can be fine but if i'm like trying to develop it somewhere if i'm trying to like move it somewhere or like trying to like get something from it then obviously like those are not going to do it i started writing when i was in middle school um because i was suicidal i'm like a, a very sensitive person and really emotional and these things are not i i don't say that i was suicidal because i'm sensitive or that i'm sensitive because i was suicidal they're like co-occurrent um, but I was an emotional kid and had a lot of feelings that were that were not and still are not really acceptable in day-to-day -day conversation. Um, so I started writing poetry primarily to give myself an outlet for those things, give myself a place to expo explore my emotional life that I didn't feel like had a forum anywhere else. Um, I started rapping shortly after that and maybe like sixth or seventh grade uh, for similar reasons. Rapping was more social because again, it was like the bling era. So everybody was excited by it. And a lot of my classmates um, were like rapping or starting to rap or starting to make beats. And so it was a way to connect with people around me because again, I'm like very emotional, very socially anxious. Um, and so having like something concrete that we could like talk about and think about together really, really helped me like develop social connections. So I started writing in, in middle school. I started recording music about eighth grade. Um, I started doing slam poetry when I was in college um, as again, kind of an outgrowth of the poetry that I was already writing, the rap that I was already performing. And this is somewhere in the middle. Uh, and then that just kind of evolved into my current writing practice. But slam competition was in 2008 in Madison. Um, and then I was on teams, my last team was in 2017 and I skipped one year. So I was on a team in 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, not 2013, 2014, 15, 16, and 17. Um, and then in 2017, uh, uh, my team placed third at the National Poetry Slam. It was the second year in a row that I'd been on final stage. And I kind of felt like through with it if that makes sense. Like I had been doing slam poetry for a long time. I felt like I was good enough at it. Like I had become as good at it as I like wanted to be. I was like consistently able to get up and perform and do the thing that I wanted. Um, and furthermore, I just, I'd been on the same team two years in a row and I kind of just wanted there to be space for other people on it. I was like already feeling a little shaky about my the space I was taking up. Um, and so I started looking for other, other venues uh, and other forms to explore Screenwriting, I had always dabbled with and always like imagined myself doing, but never really committed to working on. Um, so I had like a lot of like scenes that didn't work, like a lot of pages that were like scripts, quote unquote, but didn't really affect anyone or advance any story. Um, and so in the following year, um, in the time that I otherwise would have been preparing to compete as a slam poet, I did this instead. Um, and so I started by writing short scripts um, 
submitted a couple of those to competitions and then that it just builds up. I try not to think of it as career goals. I'm, I'm really defensive about it because again, writing, writing plays such a central role in my emotional life that I'm defensive against it becoming commodified, which is a weird place to be in as a person who's trying to like sell writing as a product. Um, but the, I, I, I try to approach it not as selling any piece of writing, but rather selling the process that produces the writing. Um, I think that Hollywood steals a lot, particularly from creators who they feel like they can get away from stealing from, which is to say black people. Um, and I think that that, that's, that doesn't work. Like, I think, I think that it, it works for the goal of like having an excuse to turn the cameras on and create a product, but I don't think it works for like creating compel good, compelling stories or good, compelling television. Um, part of the reason I think that offbeat resonates is because it is a thing that I care about and know about, you know, and it's not a hip hop show written by somebody who's imposing these conflicts onto characters, but rather someone this is maybe self-aggrandizing, but rather someone who understands the realm and is like pointing, t giving a more verite take on it, on the conflicts that already exist. Um, and so that's kind of where my head is, is like, I have a lot of stories that I want to write and a lot of, uh, on a lot of facets of my life that I want to unpack and explore and a lot of facets of the world that I want to unpack and explore. Um, but my goal is to just, my, my goal is to, my, my goal is to demonstrate the value in the process that I'm already doing rather than produce something that is like so ineffably brilliant that you must pay me a million dollars for for it. All things considered pretty content. And so I like, I've seen enough time travel fiction to know that giving advice to your younger self has terrible unintended consequences. Like, I think I did all right. I, I got, like I'm a human being. So there are like things that I regret and ways that I treated people and decisions that I made that I don't still agree with and wish I hadn't. But also I, I, I think by and large, my heart was in the right place and I was developing into the person I am now. And I like the person I am now. So if it didn't work for Marty McFly, 